In April 2014, Takada Tomi launched the Wicross Media franchise, a combination anime, manga, and trading card game that was kind of like Madoka Magica but with trading cards instead of magical girls. It was a dark, unsettling late night anime, with a way older target audience than its characters. Ruko, the protagonist of the anime, was 14 years old, but in press releases Takara stated that they were aiming to sell the game to men in their late teens to 30s. And it worked! The Wicross TCG was very popular in Japan with otaku, anime nerds. But beyond just the demographics, Wicross became well known in the Japanese TCG scene for being an incredibly deep, mechanically well-designed game, especially compared to what was on the market at the time. When Wicross launched, Cardfight Vanguard was one of the most popular TCGs in Japan, on the verge of launching its new Legion Mate block, but several elements of Vanguard had become controversial. The game involved riding from grade to grade each turn, going from 0 up to 3, but players had to regularly deal with getting grade locked or grade stuck, where they didn't draw their next grade fast enough and got stuck for several turns on a lower one while their opponent rode perfectly, purely through chance. Now Vanguard tried various attempts at fixing this over the years before finally coming up with a permanent solution in 2021 with the Ride Deck, a separate deck of cards containing all the grades you would need to ride in a game. But seven years before they came up with that, Wicross had already thought of it, and arguably did it better by actually splitting up its cards into two deck types. The main deck of 40 cards with black backs, and the L Rig deck of 10 cards with white backs. The main deck behaved like any other deck in a TCG. You shuffled it and drew cards from it every turn. The L-Rig deck, however, was more like a secondary hand you always had access to, used to contain the card that would serve as your avatar and its higher level stages, as well as arts cards that, depending on their timing, could be used on your turn or in response to an opponent's spell. Having that always available secondary hand helped make the game a more skillful experience without totally throwing out the random variants of the main deck that makes TCGs so fun. This was just one of many fixes Wicross made, and the game was also designed to create a more diverse format, where there are a lot of different decks being played at one time, and players could mostly play what they liked and still have a competitive option for each of the different deck types. It was, and is, a very good game, there was just one problem. The card game was never localized. The anime was licensed for distribution on Crunchyroll and became much better known in the Western world, to the point that a lot of English-speaking viewers were totally unaware there was a real card game the anime was selling. And after a good look at the card art and intended audience of the franchise, everybody had pretty much given up on the idea of it ever coming out. Well, on July 10th, 2021, Takara announced that the first booster set of Wicross's Diva selection format, Interlude Diva, is coming to North America in Winter 2021, along with the two starter decks Ancient Surprise and Niji Sanji version Sanbaka, and I have just one question. Why? Nobody saw this coming. The dream was over. Wicross getting a localization was not on the table. The English wiki literally had a page for years, an FAQ, with a question saying, is this going to get localized in English? And it said, no, stop asking. This is not a good time to be doing this. I don't like to talk about it because it depresses me, but you've got Digimon, Cardfight Vanguard Overdress, and Gate Ruler all going to war for the English market, while Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh are more aggressive than ever coming out of the pandemic, and Final Fantasy TCG is still going. I, I, have they canceled Caster Chronicles yet? Force of Will is still limping along out here, there, and there's Vice Schwarz. If you thought that the Digimon card game was an uphill battle, break out the bourbon and cigarettes, because Wicross fans are in for the long haul here. Okay, but really, why would they do this? It does make a little sense if you think about it. Wicross doesn't have a formal set rotation like other TCGs, but it does have separate formats. The Diva cards are part of Diva Selection, which is both a card refresh and a rules change. Diva Selection only includes the cards they started printing last year in December 2020. Seven booster sets, soon to be eight, and seven pre-constructed decks. So doing this now means the English format is less than a year behind the Japanese one and can be caught up eventually. They might also be betting on crossover appeal with fans of the Niji Sanji VTubers, which I think are popular, maybe? I don't know, corporate VTubers make me feel like science has gone too far. Anyway, Diva Selection coincides with a major reboot of the anime series that ditches the dark fantasy elements of the original in favor of a bright, peppy idol show about music divas having card battles over the internet. And the card game has major rule changes to accompany this, with players now battling with two assist L rigs in addition to the main L rig that serves as their avatar. It's kind of like using three vanguards at once in Cardfight Vanguard. 
Each L rig determines which of the five colors the player can put into their deck, which effectively determines what kinds of cards the player can use. If they don't have a red L rig, then they can't use red cards, so they'll miss out on effects that could banish their opponent's cards or send their energy to the trash. In kind, if they don't have a blue Elrig, then they'll miss out on card draw and life manipulation. In hindsight, Takara was probably planning this localization all the way back when the Diva Selection block was first announced. And they haven't confirmed this is coming out in English, but there's also a mobile tie-in game to the anime and TCG called Wickross Land. This is, in theory, a good moment for the brand to be going international, as they're now reimagining what it's going to be. But at the same time, like, who wins when Bushiroad, Bandai, and Takarotomi go to war? TPC, Konami, and Wizards of the Coast, in all probability. With so many new games flooding the English market, it's going to take more than just diehard fans of a series to keep it going. It's going to take more than just regular TCG players to keep it going. All of these games need new blood, people that have never touched a trading card game before to be playing. And if the market rebounds from 2020, and I mean not just back to normal, but like bigger than ever before rebounds, there might be a way for all of these smaller games to coexist. But right now it feels like all of the major publishers are holding guns to each other's heads. Now when Wickross is out in winter 2021, am I gonna play it? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't set foot in a card shop in two years. California just opened up on June 15th and now they're all telling me to stay inside Delta's out there. I still don't even have a locals for Digimon or Vanguard. If you ask me where I'll be in winter, I have no idea. By then, I might even own my own card shop. Or I could be elected governor, who knows? And it worked! The Wickross TCG was very popular in Japan with... Uh, Are you done? Oh, you, you want a tummy rub? Yeah, you want a tummy rub? Oh, you're a good girl. You're actually not most of the time. But I'll say it anyway, because I don't think you hear it very often. Yeah, I love you too. I love you too. Oh, bless you. Bless you. You got sneezes. All right, all right. What, do you want out? <laughs>